primary adrenocortical insufficiency. This primary adrenocortical insufficiency occurs due to defect in the adrenal glands and also normal pituitary function. Men and women are equally affected in this case and although all ages are affected but it is more common between the ages of 30 as well as 50. And what is the etiology? And this, the first is the primary acute adrenocortical insufficiency. It is mainly because of abrupt withdrawal of corticosteroids, which is the most common cause of the acute adrenocortical insufficiency. And it is precipitated by stress, additions disease crisis, massive adrenal hemorrhage, especially in the neonates following difficult delivery due to hypoxia or trauma, and also in the condition like Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome. And what about uh, the clinical features? So because of the adenocortical insufficiency, there will be deficiency of mineralocorticoids and also deficiency of glucocorticoids. So the primary chronic adenocortical insufficiency, if you see here, which is also called as Addison's disease, the important or the most common cause include autoimmune destruction of the adrenal gland, which is also called as autoimmune adrenalitis which is most common cause in the world that is approximately in 80% of the cases and 15% of the cases infection is the most common cause that is miliary TB but miliary TB is the most common cause in the India and AIDS is also one of the important cause which is approximately seen in 30% of the patients and uh, autoimmune additions disease what we are talking over here it, it is also called as uh, autoimmune adrenalitis is of two types in the type 1 there will be hypoparathyroidism and mucocutaneous candidiasis and in the type 2 it is associated with HLA A1 and B8 and autoimmune thyroid disease and insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and associated especially with autoimmune polyendocrine syndrome that is autoimmune polyendocrine syndrome APS 1 and 2 and what is the pathology over here so the chronic one if you see in the gross picture there will be a shrunken atrophied adrenal gland but the microscopic picture shows very few cortical cells and lymphoid infiltrate especially seen in autoimmune adrenalitis this is what is the gross as well as microscopic picture what you will see in the chronic but if it is an acute insufficiency the gross picture shows the adrenals which are hemorrhagic and necrotic with sacs of blood clot so this is what you need to know about uh, the chronic as well as acute causes and what is about clinical manifestations whatever may be the cause whether it is acute or chronic the clinical manifestations are predominantly due to glucocorticoid as well as mineralocorticoid deficiency the symptoms of glucocorticoid deficiency are as follows especially there will be a gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea and vomiting which is common and approximately seen in 100 percent of the cases along with this fatigue weakness failure to thrive morning headache fasting hypoglycemia increased insulin sensitivity and there will be a decreased gastric acidity and decreased uh, free water clearance all these things are the typical clinical manifestations what we will see in the glucocorticoid deficiency and if you see the list of uh, the symptoms and signs what we will see in the mineralocorticoid deficiency hypotension dizziness muscle weakness which eventually causes fatigue and like glucocorticoid deficiency symptoms in the mineralocorticoid deficiency also you will see gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea vomiting and anorexia is typical feature in this salt craving weight loss dehydration hyponatremia hyperkalemia metabolic acidosis hypoglycemia all these are the typical clinical manifestations what we will see in the mineralocorticoid deficiency but in the females you can also see adrenal androgen deficiency that can cause a decreased pubic as well as axillary hair development in the pubertal patients and also there will be a decreased libido in older patients and uh, 
due to increased melanocortin, especially from the pro-opio melanocortin cleavage products, there will be a hyperpigmentation of the skin, mucosa, palmar creases, axilla, as well as gingival borders. So now, let us see the image of acute insufficiency over here. So there is a Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome. There is a bilateral hemorrhagic infection of the adrenal glands. And the hemorrhage actually starts in the medulla and then slowly progressively involves the cortex. And you can see here that there is a presence of rapidly progressive shock as well as hypotension which is associated with the nuseria infection and meningococcemia, septicemia, especially in the children. Now let us discuss about the treatment therapy in this case. Treatment of the Addison's disease especially requires lifelong glucocorticoid as well as mineralocorticoid replacement. So hydrocortisone if you see over here that is 20 to 30 milligrams every 24 hours and uh, next is the prednisone the dose is like approximately 7.5 milligrams every 24 hours and uh, for the aldosterone deficiency may be treated with oral doses of mineralocorticoid called uh, fluorocortisone that is 0.05 milligrams or 0.1 milligrams for every 24 hours. An Addisonian crisis requires an immediate treatment and further administer intravenous hydrocortisone that is 100 milligrams every 6 to 8 hours and IV fluid resuscitation is required. And what is the Addisonian crisis? Addisonian crisis is an acute adrenal failure presents with a severe penetrating abdominal pain and the pain is excruciating in nature and which is always accompanied by the vomiting, diarrhea, low blood pressure and eventually loss of consciousness. And this condition is life threatening in nature. There is a reason we will call it as a life threatening emergency that must be managed and treated aggressively and immediately. And uh, what is the secondary adenocortical insufficiency? Secondary adenocortical insufficiency can be caused by any disorder of the pituitary or hypothalamus that reduces the production of adenocorticotrophic hormone production such as clonic glucocorticoid therapy, cancer, infection, trauma and in secondary adenocortical insufficiency, hyponatremia as well as hyperkalemia not seen in this case. And there will be hyperpigmentation of nails especially in the primary adrenal insufficiency what you can see in this picture very clearly. So this is a picture that is the fingers of 25 year old white woman with the Addison's disease compared with those of normal women what you can see in this picture very clearly that there is a typical hyperpigmentation of the skin and increased pigmentation what you can see over here is the distal half of the nails that occurred during the period of adrenal insufficiency. The proximal half of the nails are hypopigmented and a reflection of the reduction in corticotropin that is ACTH secretion after the institution of the glucocorticoid therapy. And next image what you can see in this case is the buccal hyperpigmentation due to excess ACTH production. So lips and gums of a 32 year old man demonstrated in this picture that is which typically shows hyperpigmentation of the buccal mucosa along the line of the dental occlusion and of the gums that is the high plasma ACTH concentration is the one which is actually responsible for the hyperpigmentation where due in this case to primary adrenal insufficiency and similar changes can be seen in the patients with ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome or Nelson syndrome. And you can also see black tongue in the Addison's disease you can see very clearly in this picture. So hyperpigmentation, black tongue and uh, pigmentation of the buccal mucosa all these are the typical clinical manifestations what you can see in this case. By this we completed in detail about uh, adrenocortical insufficiency.